is SportsCenter. I'm Christine Lisi. Disappointment for the Nets. Down three games to none to the Celtics. Brooklyn will not have guard Ben Simmons in the must-win in game four tonight of that first-round NBA playoff series. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reporting that Simmons had some back soreness yesterday. Suns coach Monty Williams venting about the difference in free throws after the game four loss to the Pelicans, which even that first round series at two games apiece. New Orleans shot 42 free throws compared to Phoenix's 15. The Suns called for 12 more fouls in what was a classic physical game. Williams said the Pelicans outplayed the Suns, deserved a win, but that is a free throw disparity you have to look at. A significant injury scare for the Capitals with the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs a week away. Alex Ovechkin left last night's loss with an upper body injury. He'll be evaluated evaluated today. From the ESPN studios at Pier 17 in the Seaport District of New York City, this is Greeny with Mike Greenberg on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, and on ESPN+. Plus. Back and better than ever, Greeny presented by Progressive Insurance. What a weekend it was. And the week ahead, NBA playoffs, NFL draft, fans throwing stuff, umpires trending. I can't keep up with it all. Let's go. Here we go. go, go. Only one place to start. I mean, the Celtics have done something I've never seen happen in Kevin Durant's career, and they've made him look human. Jason Tatum has ascended to superstar status. And it's not just offensively. They found a strategy that they're fully bought in on, and that's defensive. All right. It, it, is, it was quite the weekend, and I was here for all of it as we had between Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday, we had eight NBA games that we covered for you, including I spent part of my night on the floor at Barclays in Brooklyn. So delighted to be with you here and delighted to bring the Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless with the assembled members of the Hashtag crew. We've got Hashtag Hembo alongside. We've got Hashtag Nuno today. I assume we do not have Bubba. Is that correct? That is correct. It's is, Monday and Bubba's not here. Is this your Bubba Free Monday, which has turned into a tradition unlike any other here on the program? And it's a, a good one, I think, for us. We could all use the, the rest. Um, <laughs> but, but anyway, let, let's just start there because... What I saw on Saturday night from the Brooklyn Nets really stunned me. Stunned me. And I'm not a former player. I, I'm not an athlete. And so I would never question a team's effort or, or their heart or anything if I didn't feel comfortable that others around me who had maybe an insight into it that I did not have were also doing the same. They were seeing the same thing I was seeing. I saw a Brooklyn Nets team on Saturday night that tapped out. I saw Kevin Durant tap out against the Boston Celtics. And in my entire life, I would have bet you anything you wanted. That was not something that we would see. That is not something the great ones do. The players that he is frequently compared to in places like this, the players I have compared him to, the company he keeps and has deserved to keep because of his greatness as a player for a generation, they don't have that night. So I'm going to give everybody a little history lesson. Straight Talk Wireless, no contract, no compromise. The date was April 20th, 420. That's not related to the story. 1986. Michael Jordan was playing a much better version of the Boston Celtics. I know we've suddenly made these Celtics out to be the 85 Bears defensively. But Michael Jordan was playing against a Celtics team that had five Hall of Famers on the floor. Five Hall of Famers on the floor and were number one in the NBA in defense that year. He's playing them in the old Boston Garden where the Celtics were 40-1 and one that year. Did Michael Jordan tap out because the defense was awfully good? Michael Jordan scored 63 points in a playoff game against that team. That was game two of that series. In game one, he only scored 49. So when facing infinitely better competition than this with infinitely worse team uh, teammates around him. He didn't have Kyrie Irving on his team. Those Bulls teams, he would have killed to have Goran Dragic on those teams. Michael Jordan scored 112 points in two games on the road in that series. For Kevin Durant to come home and take one shot in the fourth quarter was beneath him. So I don't care what anybody says. There is no defending this, and there's no coming back from it. 
There's no saying, well, it's a great defense. I, I give all the credit. Yeah, Ime Udoka, unbelievable job. Unbelievable. Are the Celtics really good? Yes, they're really good. Do they have a lot of great def defenders on their team who have length and athletic? Yes, they do. You know what the great ones do? They find a way. Or at least they, professionally speaking, die trying. They get carried out on their shield when it's over. Is that what happened Saturday night? Did you watch the game? Did anybody see that? Forget about Kyrie Irving. I don't know what, look, if they're going to sign Kyrie Irving to a long-term contract, then they richly deserve what's about to happen to them. Kyrie Irving is a person who, at least in his own mind, has a lot of things going on in his life and a lot of very deep, important thoughts. God bless him if that's what, the way he views himself. Good, fine. There are more important things than basketball in the world. But I'm not paying someone $200 million to play basketball for me if basketball is his fourth priority. And that's where we are. And the Ben Simmons thing has become a joke. I mean, just a, a, a joke. He has turned himself into a laughingstock. Because if you're going to show up at the arena and dress like that and sit where you're sitting and call all the attention upon yourself and be unwilling to play, then you deserve Reggie Miller calling you out and Stephen A. calling you out and Jalen Rose calling you out and everybody else. They're talking about him in a way that I can't remember. The last time I heard active players talking about a player the way they're now willing out loud to talk about Ben Simmons, we have to go back to Jay Cutler a generation ago when, other, when, when players in the NFL were calling him out for not coming back into a game in, in the NFC Championship game against Green Bay. Players don't do that to each other. The league doesn't believe he's too hurt to play. The league believe he doesn't want to play. Now, I can't obviously get in, it, I'm, I'm not in his back, so I can't tell you what it is or isn't. But I can tell you that the Brooklyn Nets are unlike anything I've seen in a very long time. Look, the Lakers were a disappointment this year, but it was easy to see why. Russell Westbrook is, A, completely a shell of what he was at his best, and B, a terrible fit. He is the definition of a round peg in a square hole. Whatever peg doesn't fit in a hole, that's what he was on that team. And Anthony Davis got hurt. He always gets hurt, but he got hurt. That was the explanation for them. This team has no excuse. Kevin Durant didn't want to play with the Splash Brothers. He didn't want to play with Steph. He wanted his own team. Kyrie Irving didn't want to play with LeBron James. He didn't want to play in Boston. He wanted his own team. Well, now they've got it. And look at them. Because being a great player doesn't make you a leader. And that team desperately needs it. And I don't know if they're turning to the sideline to try and find it. But Steve Nash, if someone wants to inform him that the series has not only begun, but is practically over... The idea that I'm, I'm reading the papers yesterday. Nuno, jump in with me on this. I'm reading some of the write-up of this, and I'm hearing about how Steve Nash deserves to get fired. Here is the analogy I will make to the role that Steve Nash has played in this series. If you're going to blame what is happening to the Nets on Steve Nash, that would to me be equivalent to blaming the sinking of the Titanic on Kate Winslet, <laughs> which is to say she was there, but she didn't have a damn thing to do with what happened. And to me, that's how I view Steve Nash. So those are my thoughts on all of this. Let me bring the assembled members of the hashtag crew in for theirs. I'm Greeny. I'm presented by Progressive Insurance. Progressive can protect your home, auto, boat, motorcycle, ATV, RV, and more. In short, a lot of things bundled today at Progressive.com. Nuno, your thoughts. So the Steve Nash, we all know he's going to get fired because that's the easiest thing you can do, right? It's just fire. It's the only the, thing they can the, do. It's the only thing they can do. And, you know, we can go back to... And Kyrie warned everyone back in October of 2020, he was on KD's podcast and he said, I don't really see us having a head coach that at some days I can be the head coach. Some days Kevin Durant could be the head coach. Uh, so they warned us. I think with Durant, Kyrie was always his protection. If things were going going to go wrong, we always thought that the media would blame Kyrie. But guess what? He doesn't have that protection based upon his play and the fact that he looks checked out. I know he talks about, oh, you know, making the right basketball plays and things of that nature. Uh, no, like you need a, you need to shoot you needed to shoot 40 times. If that's what it took to win the game, you need to shoot 40 times. The guys, Bruce Brown, they kept you in this game. They've kept you in this series. 
And when you would think that Kevin Durant would say, all right, enough's enough. Let me be the best player on the court. He hasn't. And I don't know what it is. And I don't want to say he's quit on his team, but that's the impression that I've gotten is that he's quit on this series. Mary J. Blige is sitting courtside begging them to play. Did you see that? Did you see when Kyrie's over there and she's like, come on, what are you doing for crying out loud? Like Mary J. Blige is doing more inspirational leading than anyone else on that Nets team. Now, maybe they're blinded by, by Ben Simmons' outfit. I mean, they've become a circus. That team is a circus. And if I sound frustrated, it's because I am. Because I'm the host of this stuff now, and I wanted the drama. Their drama is going out. Done. They don't want, they don't want any part of going back to Boston. This idea that Kevin Durant is going to rise up and play hard tonight. The time to play hard was Saturday. If they were getting back in that series, not only did they win Saturday night, but they win that game easily. The, the team that's going to come back in this series is going to win game three at home easily to establish, okay, we're here. Then game four is going to be a dogfight, and they're going to find a way. Kevin Durant's going to make a shot light, and they're going to win, and now it's anybody's series. When you get punked in your own building the way they did in the second half the other night, you don't come back and win a game in the series. I mean, the time to play hard is October, November, December, January, February, and March. And they didn't do that or play together, obviously, because of their circumstances. And when you disrespect the game like that, this is the outcome. The, the notion that they could have just flipped a switch was always disrespectful to the game of basketball and to their opponents. Honestly, I don't, I don't know that Shakespeare could have concocted a, a, a tragedy as beautiful as the 2022 Nets because every single <laughs> antagonist in the story has played his role so perfectly. And as a contrarian, it is a sight to behold from the outside. Well, I don't even think you have to be a contrarian. I, I think they are, I would guess that around the country, they're the least liked team in the sport. I, can you imagine the amount of yeah. joy that there is right now in, in households all over the country watching this game and watching them just get their noses rubbed in it? Because you're right. You're right. They treated the regular season like it didn't matter. Where well, we're going to get together. They don't need the regular season. They don't need the coach. They don't need anything. They just need the two of them. And now they're going to go down. You, you, ever, you, you, you don't know. I'm even looking at you. <laughs> there, is a, there is a movie called Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Look it up. It's a very famous movie in which the two of them, Paul Newman and, and, uh, and Robert Redford, and it's just the two of them against the world. And the last scene in the movie, spoiler alert, it's 50 years old, so I feel comfortable telling it to you, <laughs> is they think that they're going to get into a gunfight with like a small group of people. But there's actually an army waiting for them, and it's just the two of them. And they come out with their guns, and the movie ends on the notion that they're about to just get obliterated. That's who Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving are. They are Butch Cassidy and the Sun. It's them against the world. And you know what they just have learned? And, and, but unfortunately, I don't think either one of them learns a lesson from this is that it doesn't work that way. Can you imagine how happy LeBron James is oh, right now goodness. and Steph Curry oh, right now? Goodness. The only thing that didn't happen was that Steph didn't pull off the sweep yesterday. But if they had swept, and they're going to obviously beat Denver easily, but when, when they just keep going, Golden State looks better off without KD, mm -hmm. and LeBron and Cl Cleveland is better off right now without Kyrie. Mm -hmm. Why would you give him $250 million? I mean, you deserve it. They so richly deserve what will happen to them when they do. And because <laughs> if you think he was a problem now, wait, wait till you see how disinterested he becomes when it doesn't make any difference at all anymore. There's literally <laughs> nothing they can do to him. <laughs> and I think, look, I, right now the Warriors are the favorite to win the championship. Mm -hmm. If they do wind up winning without KD, having won one before he was there and one after we, uh, he was there, of course, you can almost render those two totally meaningless on his ledger, making what was already a, a terrible three-year stretch for him in Brooklyn all that much more, all, yeah. that, all that worse. Look, these two guys came together. Mm -hmm. They've played three. Well, they haven't even played because Durant was too hurt to play the first year, and Kyrie didn't feel like it. And, and then the second year, Durant – that's the thing that frustrates me so much. Mm. Durant last year, we carried him – he got carried off on his shield and deserved it. Harden got hurt. Kyrie got hurt. Durant played like crazy. He almost won that series against the eventual champions by himself. That's why I'm so surprised by this. Are we going to see that KD ever again? Are we sure we are? I don't know. Why are we so sure? But that why we wouldn't we? Did he just lose it completely from then to now? I, I don't know what happened here. I, I think that Kyrie happened. I think Kyrie gets hmm. in his head. But the great ones... The great ones care about it more than they care about anything else.
sometimes to a fault. Sometimes it is a detriment in their own lives. But they're obsessed. They're consumed with winning and with being the best. And that is de definitively not what we are seeing from the Brooklyn Nets right now. You're, you said it exactly right. They have disrespected the game, and they richly deserve what is happening to them as a result. You know what makes AutoZone America's number one battery destination? Because they offer free battery testing and charging and reliable replacement batteries starting at just $79.99. They've always got your battery solution. Get in the zone with AutoZone. I'll do a green list of my top five NBA takeaways. we got plenty of draft coverage to come. We are busy on this Monday, rolling on. It's Greeny on ESPN Radio. Today on ESPN Daily, no one has asked tougher questions of the Nets superstars than Nick Friedel, who explains why a lot more than this season is on the line for the Brooklyn Nets as they face getting swept by the Celtics tonight. So follow us and listen on your favorite podcast. This is Greeny. This is a metaphor for your business's journey. Sometimes it feels like you're going 100 miles an hour, barely keeping up. But to cruise through challenges, you need someone who's right there with you. That's what Dell Technologies Advisors do. They have the Windows PCs and tech advice you need to get past whatever's in front of you and get where you want to go. Call an advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. A start to a simpler experience with Windows 11 Pro. Hello, Discover here to explain our cash back match. Here's how it works. We give you cash back for using your Discover card on the things you were going to buy anyway. Then we match that cash back in your first year. And that's why we call it Cash Back Match. Now to recap and say cash back one more time. We match all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year automatically. Discover. Exceptionally common sense. Learn more at discover.com slash match. Limitations apply. So, yeah. Your team is on a streak, a losing one. You need to scout some new career prospects. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. An Indeed resume gets right to work for you. It helps you adapt your skills and make sure you stand out so you can find that better fit fast. Can you think of a time things didn't go as you planned? How much time do we have? At Torque, we're building the self-driving transportation of tomorrow. But when I fly commercial, I fly ROA. When Subway open, they change the fast food game. But sometimes you gotta refresh to be fresh. Welcome to the Eat Fresh Refresh. We got the, wait, that's new. Because we're refreshing the refresh. What? Refresh, refresh. There's the new honey mustard chicken, the Subway Club, and the new Baja Turkey Avocado with New Baja Chipotle sauce? Yep. They're constantly refreshing with better ingredients, better footlongs, and better spokespeople. It's, it's the, the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway, and they're gonna keep refreshing and... I'm defeated, feel mistreated. I'm so angry, I'm singing a song. Cause I'm paying so much for home internet and that's just wrong. I've got T-Mobile home internet. I feel happy. Great. Very happy. Good for you. Look how much money I'm saving right now. Wait, really? There's no hidden fees, no price hikes, one core. Bro, Introducing T-Mobile 5G home internet. Just 50 bucks a month. It's that simple. Is to unfold. Blackness in full and at home. In the landscape. For an NFL prospect, there's one moment that comes before the big announcement on national television that often matters even more. Hello? 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 It's a simple phone call, and it changes everything. Congratulations. <laughs> a phone call that erases any stigma. That's what I'm talking about, baby. <laughs> a phone call that lets the world know how far you've come in life. I promise you, you're going to get everything I got and then some.
Whether a prospect was at the draft or in a faraway state like Hawaii, at home with friends and family, or throwing a bowling party, as then Wisconsin tackle Joe Thomas proved in 2007, as long as you have cell phone service, the location can be anywhere. When my agent told me about the draft and he asked if I wanted to go and I told him no way, he said, I have to be able to reach you. I said, okay, well, how about I go fishing? He said, okay, you can go fishing if you're in cell coverage so I can call you. We went out on the Foxy Lady, pretty good sized boat for being out there. The Browns were on the clock with the third pick. Neither Phil or Romeo, one of those guys said, hey, how would you like to be a Cleveland Brown? We were high-fiving and getting pretty excited, hooting and hollering as well. And I think that's it for the fishing. Let's head back to shore. In the 2011 NFL Draft, Cal defensive lineman Cameron Jordan was about to be drafted by two different teams. We land in New Orleans. I think I get a playbook, talk to the coach and staff. I know I was sitting there with Bill Johnson, my D-line coach at the time, and we get I get a phone call, and I'm like, hello? And they're like, hey, we want to take you to the pick. I'm like, ah, you, you got the wrong guy. And they're like, oh, sorry, you know, whatever. Jordan Cameron, Cameron Jordan, you get a thing happen, and that was that. I look over at my, my D-line coach, Bill Johnson, and I'm just like, like, Bill, I just had a phone call from the Browns. I've already been drafted, but you could send the, the bonus over. I'll take two bonuses on any given day. No matter the location or the circumstance, the one tradition, the one moment that cannot be replaced will be the phone calls that alter everything. It's a moment in time that is so big for that individual. They've worked all their life to get in that position. And then to get that phone call, I don't care if you're a top 10 pick or you're the last pick in the draft or a free agent. It's huge. Hello? Upsets in the history of combat sports. Juliana Pena the world! Now, Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena face off again as coaches yes. in the toughest competition in sports. <laughs> They'll train two teams of promising young fighters battling to win UFC contracts to twist the 30th season of The Ultimate Fighter exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. This is Greeny on ESPN Radio, presented by Progressive Insurance. My green list is 30 seconds away. Top five NBA takeaways from the weekend. We have huge draft stuff to get to, including it looks like a change at the very tippy top. All that and more. But again, these 30 seconds are from Zip Recruiter. According to research, 90% of employers plan to make enhancing the employee experience a top priority in 2022. After all, a happy workplace, like one that allows for a flexible schedule and focuses on company culture is key to attracting and keeping great employees. If you need to add more employees to your team, there's ZipRecruiter with technology that finds the right candidates for your job and proactively presents them to you. You can easily review the candidates and invite your top choices to apply. Try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Greeny at ZipRecruiter.com slash G-R-E-E-N-Y. The list is what determines who matters in this business. Green list. All right, here we go. My green list, my top five, this, that, or the other. And today it is my top five takeaways from a weekend that I spent, as you hopefully did as well, doing basically nothing but watching NBA postseason action. Number five. We've talked a lot about the Nets. I will just say this again. This one goes on KD's permanent record. If this doesn't look vastly different tonight, this series does not get forgotten. People still talk about LeBron James from a series he played in the finals 11 years ago against Dallas. 
This is a first round series in which his team is about to get swept and he has been the primary reason his team has not won. If this was LeBron James, Embo, I'll give you credit. You said it last week, and I said it on TV this weekend and didn't credit you for it because that's just the way I am. But you couldn't have been more right. If this was LeBron James, people would be talking about this series for the rest of his life. They should treat this the same way. Do you, you know how many shots Kevin Durant has made in the fourth quarter in the, across three games in this series? Um, I'm going to say less than five. He has made three shots three. in 34th quarter minutes this series. It, it's, it, it, it goes on the permanent record. It can, we cannot pretend otherwise. Number four. Uh, number four, I feel terrible for Joel Embiid, and I'm going to let the members of the hashtag crew chime in with their takes in a minute. I'm sure yours will be about the Sixers. But, look, I don't know if that team was going to go to the finals this year or not, but I think they had a real chance. They were going to steamroll through Toronto, and I still believe they will. And I think their series against Miami would have been a pick em, like an even shot. Tyrese Maxey is playing so well. You won't have to worry about the thigh bowl vaccination situation anymore after this round. But primarily, Embiid was playing so well. You said it last week, Cambo. He was the best player in the playoffs. And for him to tear a ligament in his thumb, it's just not going to be the same. He's going to play through it because he's tough and he wants it. And I respect the hell out of him for it. And he'll have surgery whenever their season comes to an end. But I think... This is going to determine their fate. Like, I just don't think they can beat Miami with him having this injury. And I feel terrible for him because I, I would have made that a pick em. I, I would have said Philly-Miami is 50-50. And Embiid's greatness was the reason why. Uh, he could have carried them. And I just think with that injury in his right hand, it's almost impossible for me to picture it not being a major factor. So I really feel bad for him because he has played great. He finally got rid of the Simmons thing. And this was his chance. So I feel bad for him. I really do. We'll get Hembo's thoughts on that as we go. Number three. Uh, at number three, the Bulls had to have the worst weekend of any team I've seen in a very long time. My kids were at both of these games, by the way. Not only did they not get to see, and the, all the fans in Chicago, get to see one minute of competitive basketball. They were not in either of these games for a minute. <laughs> both these games were over. Like the, the, you could still hear the the echo of the whistle of the opening buzzer, and the game was over. But then for Grace and Allen to dominate them in both games, I tell you what, boy, has the NBA changed. The fact that no one on the Bulls deposited him in the second round, uh, the second row of seats at any point in those two games when he was just humiliating them after all that's happened, the league has changed. Maybe for the better. That's that's not for me to say. I'm certainly not advocating violence, but every now and again, a hard foul is a hard foul. I can't believe they did not take one on him when these games were completely out of hand and he was driving to the basket with no fear whatsoever. So the Bulls put up no fight, none. It was a, an embarrassing performance, to be completely honest with you. Has any team won more games without even competing against good teams than the Bulls did this year? So that series will mercifully end in five games. What a terrible weekend that was for their fans. Number two. Number two is I told you about Brandon Ingram. I have been telling you all season, from the minute he started playing, this has been a good team. They were 1-12 when this season started. And the primary reason is because he was hurt. And since he came back, he is everything Ben Simmons is not. He was drafted one spot after Simmons. And Mike Schmitz, I still remember leading up to that draft, saying over and over and over again, they should take Ingram number one. They should take Ingram number one. He's the best player in this. And even when uh, Simmons won the Rookie of the Year, Schmitz was still saying Ingram is the best player, and he is. Look how good he is, and look how hard he plays, and look how much he wants it. The Pelicans are good. And I've been telling you that for a while. And if they should ever get Zion, that's a team with a very interesting future. But Brandon Ingram is a star in the NBA. If he was playing anywhere else, people would pay a lot more attention to him. So I, this is one I got right. I've been telling you that since like sometime in December or January, I started raving about him because I'm paying attention to them. He is that kind of good. Number one. And, and then finally at number one, I'll say it again. They're going to fire Steve Nash, the Nets are, because there's nothing else to do. You can't do anything with KD. You can't do anything with Kyrie. You can't do anything with Ben Simmons. And those three are their actual problems. So what they'll do is they will just, I used a Titanic 
analogy earlier, they'll just reshuffle the deck chairs on the Titanic. They'll bring in someone else to coach them that Kyrie will ignore completely. And that other person will stand there helplessly on the sideline watching the game while their team and that team winds up underachieving. So they're going to fire Steve Nash, and he has absolutely nothing to do with what is wrong with them. And that is the Green List today. Greeny with you, brought you, uh, presented by Progressive Insurance. And now a no-frills ad brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Here it is. You could save big when you bundle your home and auto with Progressive. That's it. See, just a good old-fashioned, straightforward ad. See if you could save at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE or Progressive.com. Hembo, I'll give you the floor. What is your take from this weekend in the NBA? Yeah, so mine has to come from Philadelphia. Obviously, that's the team that I root for. And I would say two things most stand out to me, or at least two, there are two, two, two uh, strong feelings that I have. The first of which is, I know not all injuries are created equal, but it is kind of nice to see an NBA superstar, in the case of Joel Embiid, be willing to play through an injury in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Look, it's not always smart to do so. It's not even always possible to do so but there are a lot of players in this league right now that would most definitely not continue playing in the postseason because they have this I mean, a, t a torn ligament in the thumb is something that affects you on every single play so good on him for that all that said <laughs> i am scared to death that the sixers are going to blow the lead i i'm scared to death the raptors are going to lose this series. are going to win four straight games and beat us look game three was a, t a toss up that we did not lead to the very end it required a game winning shot in overtime for us to win that game and then game four, the Raptors came back. I am confident that from an X's and O standpoint, Nick Nurse is a heck of a lot better than Doc Rivers. And if Joel Embiid is only sort of an approximation of himself, I'm really, really worried about the next three games. So do you believe the nurse is superior to the doctor <laughs> in this case? You, you, you are, I know you're very in touch with the saying in Philly and Philly radio mm -hmm. and everything. Is that the mindset there right now? They're scared to death they're going to be the first team ever to blow a 3 nothing lead? There, yes, there's a... There's a, there's a potent, there's a doom on the horizon that we can sniff a little bit, just like last year against Atlanta when it felt like this couldn't really happen, right? And you, you, look, we've had that feeling many times in that city, and right now it's sort of coming. Like if if game if game five goes the other way, it is already Armageddon in well, Philly. Well, I, I I hear that Jalen said it on TV the other night mm. uh, with us. He said they better end this in five. Yep. If they don't end mm -hmm. it in five, then all the pressure on the planet falls on them. But I think they will. I think at home they will win that game. How, how hurt is Van Vliet? I, I was trying to find out an update on that yesterday, and I couldn't find out. He's an important part of Toronto. Someone looked that up. You look that up while I get Nuno's take here, because I think that's an important piece of the story. Go ahead, Nuno. I'll give you the floor. What is your number one takeaway from the NBA weekend? And real quick, uh, Tim Bonteps uh, tweeted about five minutes ago, Van Vliet will not, uh, says he won't play tonight, says he's taking it day by day from here. Okay, so, so that yeah. that that is right. a huge. He's an important part Big of that time. team. So I'll give you. I have three quick ones, and because I'm a miserable Nick fan, they all pertain to how these things have making me feel very good. Okay. One <laughs> is watching the Bulls just being absolutely demolished, where everyone was, oh, the Bulls are, you know, uh, potential of a championship team or like can challenge. That is beautiful to watch them just. Just completely, you know, uh, not even show up uh, when they should uh, and be competitive. Two is the fact that Trey Young is struggling, that the Miami Heat are just shutting him down, that he looks like. I, I don't even know that that we shouldn't have stopped talking about him being a quote unquote superstar and wondering if he's a star. Okay. And three is for all those Net fans who thought. Brooklyn was going to overtake, you know, New York and be the team everyone loves in New York. How's that working out for you? <laughs> so Nuno has to point out all the things that the Knicks fan in him enjoys uh, and conveniently leaving out the Celtics are looking like the best team in the NBA. Yeah, right that, this minute. That, that one that one does hurt. But in all seriousness, even though this series tied to to the uh, Grizzlies, T-Wolves, something is wrong with John Morant. Like they are lucky to be, uh, you know, tied at 2-2. That series should be 3-1. Um, after they, you know, blew they blew that twenty something point lead, and you know, win that close game. That, but there is something wrong with that team. And even if they get through this round, there it'll be a quick exit in the second round. Yeah, Golden State would get the it will get the winner of that one. Go ahead, Hembo. I just wanted to push back on on the Steve Nash comment that you made earlier because while I don't believe he's anywhere near the very top of the list of Nets problems, I don't think the head coach can ever go without at least some blame when a team so underperforms like this and. 
That's because there's so much more that a coach does than just diagram plays or roll the ball out in his case. It's also incumbent upon him and the organization to create a culture that does not allow his team to quit in the third quarter of a playoff team, game, to create a culture for which Ben Simmons shouldn't feel empowered to, to dress like a traffic light and stand up during the entire game uh, attracting attention to himself. That's part of the job, too. Uh, to me, there's no way that you can assess the Nets, uh, the, the Nets in totality without at least some of the blame falling on Steve. I thoroughly disagree, huh. and I will tell you why. Because the particular players that we are talking about have all of the power in that situation, meaning Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and to a degree, even Ben Simmons. And the truly great ones understand that their role is to be that leader on the team. And one of the ways they do that is by allowing themselves to be coached, by allowing the coach to create that environment and culture you're talking about. KD and Kyrie have made a mockery of the notion that Steve Nash is the person in charge. They've done that to him. He doesn't have the ability to coach them if they are unwilling to be coached by him. And they are enormously unwilling to do that. So uh, Steve Nash, Red Auerbach, Phil Jackson, uh, Greg Popovich, none of them could coach this team any better mm. or any more meaningfully. Mm. What, what they, would all, they would all leave. <laughs> None of them would sit there and put up with this, with being ignored. Now, you know what? Phil Jackson wouldn't take a job where the star players on the team said, we don't really need a coach. One night Kevin will handle it, and the other nights I'll handle it. Phil Jackson would have said, you guys handle that then. I'll be okay over here doing my thing. Because Michael Jordan, was he the easiest person in the world to deal with? Hell no. But Michael Jordan allowed himself to be coached. Tom Brady, did he love every second of playing with Bill Belichick? No, but he allowed Belichick to be the coach and the leader. Kobe Bryant, headstrong, we all understand that, you know, uh, stubborn, all the rest of that, allowed Phil Jackson to be the coach. And you know what? When Phil left, I think Kobe learned a lesson from it and said we need him back and wanted Phil back, and that's how they won two more championships after the Phil hiatus in the middle of it all. So the point of it is... Steve Nash can't do any more than he's doing because he's not being allowed to. He's not being empowered to by the people who actually have the power. Because in Brooklyn, Joe Sy has no authority, and Sean Marks has no authority, and Steve Nash has no authority. The authority is exclusively vested by the power vested in me, whatever the term is. It has been vested in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, and they have all of the power. Do you disagree with that? I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I don't. I can't say with any degree of certainty that no coach could have done a better job at, at harnessing that, at creating a better culture. Maybe I'm just naive, but I'd, I don't think if Greg Popovich were coaching this team that they'd be in the position they are now. But look, he's obviously the exception. And Greg Nash Popovich would have walked out the door a very long time ago and said, <laughs> I can't deal with this insanity. Someone else take this job. Uh, and, and when they fire Steve Nash, you go show me who's going to be – show me who's lining up to be the coach of the Nets or the Lakers as they go forward. All right, coming up next, um, this is going to be very, very interesting. My draft prep will include a change at the very tippy top of the NFL draft. That's next after this word from NetSuite. In growing companies, there are two kinds of CFOs. There's the one overwhelmed with manual processes and errors and lack of control of the numbers. And then the one who uses NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. With visibility and control of financials, inventory, HR, planning, and budgeting, NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. The CFOs that get it, get it. The CFOs that don't, don't. Head to netsuite.com slash greeny for a special one-of-a-kind financing offer. That's netsuite.com slash greeny. Back in a flash on ESPN Radio. Barbasol Shaving Cream, America's leader for a close, comfortable shave. Better by Barbasol. More from Greeny next. And now it's Geico's Motorcycle Rules of the Road. Avoid biking in the rain and never touch another person's bike. Hey, guys, look at these bikes. So shiny. Uh, whoops. I'm going to leave a note. Oh, gosh, there's more. And the rule to saving on motorcycle insurance is, in 15 minutes, Geico could save you 15% or more. 
Making Moves is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. The Pittsburgh Steelers had never traded up in the first round of the NFL draft until 2003, offering up their 27th, 92nd, and 200th pick to the Kansas City Chiefs for their 16th pick. With that 16th pick, the Steelers chose USC's Troy Palomalu, a decision that paid off for years. Palomalu was part of two Super Bowl victories, and in 2020, he was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Making Moves is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Your team wouldn't waste time interviewing 30 linemen if they wanted to draft a cornerback, right? The same is true when you're looking for your next teammate. LinkedIn Jobs taps into a network of over 770 million professionals to find you the right people. LinkedIn Jobs helps you narrow down to the most qualified candidates so you can start hiring the right people faster. Go to LinkedIn.com slash sports to post your job for free. That's LinkedIn.com slash sports. LinkedIn.com slash sports. Terms and conditions apply. Cutting the price of your wireless bill feels good. Really good. Actually, it feels great. You should try it out. So cut your bill by switching to Straight Talk Wireless. Now offering our $45 Silver Unlimited plan with 5 gigabytes of hotspot and nationwide 5G on America's largest, most dependable networks. The $45 Silver Unlimited plan from Straight Talk. Straight Talk Wireless. No contract, no compromise. A month equals 30 days. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. 5G capable device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. It's still the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway, and they're refreshing everything, even their Italians. Whoa, you talking Italians? Jimmy's going to take it from here. Refresh Italiano. See, Subway now has Italian-style Capicola, and you could try it on top of Bel Gioioso fresh mozzarella in the matzo meat, or stacked on three more Italian-style meats in the supreme meats. That's just like my Nona makes when she cooks. I don't cook. Wait, what? It's a good thing he's so handsome. It's to Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway, and they're going to keep refreshing and At Torque, we're building the self-driving transportation of tomorrow. But when I fly commercial, I fly ROA. I'm defeated, feel mistreated. I'm so angry, I'm singing a song. Cause I'm paying so much for home internet and that's just wrong. I've got T-Mobile home internet. I feel happy. Great. Very happy. Good for you. Look how much money I'm saving right now. Wait, really? There's no hidden fees, no price hikes, one core. Introducing T-Mobile 5G home internet. Just 50 bucks a month. It's that simple. Oh, I've travelled all over, telling folks they could save by bundling home and car insurance. But here's the real secret. Eye contact. We just had a moment. Geico. Pacifico is a crisp golden lager. Brewed for those who know, it's what's behind a label that matters. When you really commit to a garden and nurture it, your energy goes into the fruits and the vegetables that you're growing. Find more ways to grow at MiracleGrow.com. So if we're comparing the shot clock to other innovations, sliced bread, the internet, airplane travel, where does it rank? In its relationship to sports, it's as big as landing on the moon, it's as big as air travel. Personally, I put it above the Easy Pass, below the fryer, though. The air fryer, that thing is magic. You can do anything with that. I don't know. I think it's way bigger than the air fryer because there's other ways to reheat fries. But yeah. there's no other way to save the game than the shot clock. What makes the shot clock so amazing is 70 years later. Vince Carter beat the clock. It still seems the right amount of seconds, right? You've got eight seconds to bring the ball over half court. Xavier McDaniel works again. Well, 83-54, the Supersonics. Leaves you 16 to do something. Xavier McDaniel's passing the ball tonight more than I've ever seen him pass in a game. Eight or nine seconds to run a play and then get a shot up. Now he passed it again. Ellis for three! It seems to end up being the right number. A game without a shot clock is really, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's cold pizza.
exclusive on ESPN+. Plus. What if every Donovan Mitchell three-pointer... He nailed it! Oh, my goodness! Mike Conley assist or Rudy Gobert dunk did more than just notch another Jazz win. What if these plays could help change a life? I'm so happy for you. So very happy for you. I'd like to give you this basketball and acknowledge your new stewardship. After Ryan and Ashley Smith bought the Utah Jazz in late 2020, they looked towards making an impact in the community. Right when we took over, one of the very first things we did, you know, based on the community conversation was like, what is it that we want to stand for? I come from a family of educators and everything is about education and youth. And to me, it was a no brainer. We want to give voices to people who maybe don't get the opportunities that we got. We came back to education a lot. We came up with a scholarship idea. In March 2021, the Utah Jazz Scholars Program was born. I am Greeny. Try the $45 Silver Unlimited plan from Straight Talk Wireless with Nationwide 5G and America's Best Network. Straight Talk Wireless, no contract, no compromise. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. 5G capable device required. Actual availability coverage and speed may vary. This is the beginning of what is the busiest week of the year for me. Um, it's invigorating and exciting and delightful. Um, which is to say that I had eight NBA playoff games last weekend and I've got the NFL draft Thursday and Friday. Um, so I am up to my neck in it and I am loving every second of it. Um, and so I'm going to try and give you a little draft prep here. And the first question that Hembo had prepared for me was, is Aiden Hutchinson a lock to be the number one overall pick? Now you put that question down last week. There has been a seismic shift since that time. And one of the evidence or one illustration of that is from the gambling. That's right. So Caesar Sportsbook for the last, like, three months has had Aiden Hutchinson as their favorite. In most cases, their odds on favorite to be the number one overall pick. The end for Michigan, everyone just accepted it and put it in pen. Until literally last night. So I've checked this every few days. And as it stands at this very moment, Trayvon Walker, the defensive end, the edge rusher out of Georgia, who has been rising up draft boards over the last couple months, is now minus 200. He's, a, he's, a, he's an odds on favorite himself now to become the number one overall pick. So that has changed in the last 24 hours. For the longest time, it was Hutchinson, and now Walker's in the driver's seat. As the number one pick in the draft, and again, he was, if, if any of you who follow college football closely know, he was about the fifth most well-known player on that defense. Now, Georgia had one of the great defenses in college football history this year, and they used it to win the national championship. But this is a guy who, went, because I've been following this stuff as closely as you can follow it, when these mock drafts first started coming out in December, oh, you have it here. Mm -hmm. The mock draft that, is this Mel or, or McShay's mock? Doesn't matter. On, on the middle of January, he was projected to go 24th. And then as the process has moved along, he went from 24th in that mock to 16th in the next mock to 12th to 2nd. And now it looks like he's going to go first. So what do I think of that? It scares me to death if I'm the person thinking of taking him. Because that suggests that when we stop watching the tape, stop watching what he did on the field, and look at the, the remarkable physical gifts which he has, a person of his size and strength to be as fast and as quick as he is, it's ridiculous. So he's one of these fell in love with him at the combine kind of people, and he is going to vault all the way up, it appears now, to the number one pick in the draft as a result. So, the, so the, the game in which Georgia beat Bama in the national championship, that was January the 10th. Kuyper's mock, um, his first one after that, was the 19th, at which point, like you said, he was the 24th overall pick. I am all for using the data science to help you make informed decisions. 
But you can't possibly convince me that if you were the 24th best player in the country when the season ended, you can now be the number one pick in the draft just because of that. I mean, Aiden Hutchinson had more sacks and more pressures than Walker uh, this season than Walker did in his entire career. There's, you have to have some marriage between production and the data science. And obviously, if he winds up going 1-1, then it, look, I mean, you might as well not even watch the freaking tape from the season. I don't know how else to say it. He was, like, like you said, the fifth best player on Georgia's defense, and he might be the first pick in the country. Yeah. They, That's they, crazy. They have all these other guys. So we will see, but th that appears to be the direction that it's going. So that'll be the beginning of our draft prep. Let's move forward. You ne next asked me, five years from now, which quarterback in this class will have had the most success in the NFL? I'm going to give you a cop-out answer. The answer to the question, which guy can be the best, is unquestionably Malik Willis. Malik Willis, who's the quarterback from Liberty, has the skill set to be, I don't even know, Kyler Murray, that, that kind of player. He is an extraordinarily dynamic runner with a cannon for an arm. But it's raw. And the question is, does he get developed properly? You've heard me say a million times, far more young quarterbacks come into the NFL and are destroyed than are developed. So I think he has the most talent, and it's not even close. And everyone around him loves him. I mean, they rave about the attitude, the character, all that kind of stuff. So I think he's got all of the – he's like a, a lump of clay, right? But it's got to be molded properly. And if molded properly, it's the highest quality clay. Like, it's, it's the clay that could turn into, like, a statue that you want to put in a museum and look at for the rest of your life. No other quarterback in this year's class has, the, 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 has clay that quality. But many of the others, particularly Kenny Pickett, who's the other guy who's going to go in the first round, their clay is already a lot more molded. Like you're, you don't have to spend nearly as much time and energy doing the molding because it's already almost made. So those are the two guys. I think there are huge questions about everybody else. So I think the answer is, if, if he's lucky, if he winds up in a good situation, Malik Willis has a chance to be a really good NFL quarterback. It's going to really come down to where he winds up. It's funny, because the next question you had is, which player drafted in the top 10 would you consider the biggest boom or bust candidate? I was going to say Trayvon Walker, mm. for exactly the reasons we just uh, <laughs> laid out, that he is a player who, based upon his play – was considered to be a late first-round option. And now all of a sudden he's going to go number one. And I was going to say this when I thought he might go number four to the Jets. So I'm honestly a little bit relieved <laughs> that he's not going to because it doesn't seem that way. I'll do one more here, and then we'll have time for some more. I've got You have a bunch of really good questions in here about the Jets and the Giants and some other teams that have multiple picks. But you ask, which is the most interesting player tidbit that I've encountered, and I'll give you this one. Bernard Ryman is an offensive lineman from Central Michigan. He's a kid who grew up in Austria. He played for the Vienna Vikings. He came to the United States on a, um, a, a, as an exchange student. The family that hosted him had a former Central Michigan player in their family. He sort of fell in love with that idea. So after he finished his exchange student time, he went back to Austria, he completed his military, mandatory military service, came back to the United States, played at Central Michigan, and is now going to be most likely a first-round pick <laughs> in the NFL draft. By the way, he's 25 years old. So that, that, to me, is the most interesting of the many interesting little stories about the players whose names we will call on Thursday and Friday night on ESPN. Back in a flash. ESPN Radio. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max. What up, baby? ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Channel 80. Mark yeah. this down, yeah. my peoples. You heard it here on KJM. The ESPN app. We're on your podcast. We're on your smart speakers. And we're we're everywhere. So open your window. You'll be able to hear us. This is a metaphor for your business's journey. Sometimes it feels like the world is throwing everything it has at you. And to succeed, you need someone to guide you through. That's what Dell Technologies Advisors do. They have the Windows PCs and tech advice to help you navigate whatever challenges you're up against and get you safely to where you want to be. 
Call an advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. A start to a simpler experience with Windows 11 Pro. The job search can be a frustrating journey filled with long, lonely hours on the computer and countless attempts to get noticed by employers. ZipRecruiter gets it. No one wants to feel alone in their job search. That's why ZipRecruiter's AI does so much of the work for you. They save you time by sending you jobs you can apply to with one click, and they pitch your profile to employers so you stand out. Job seekers feel the love. Sign up for free at ZipRecruiter.com. Once again, that's ZipRecruiter.com. Your team is on a streak, a losing one. You need to scout some new career prospects. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. An Indeed resume gets right to work for you. It helps you adapt your skills and make sure you stand out so you can find that better fit fast. Can you think of a time things didn't go as you planned? How much time do we have? It's still the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway, and they're refreshing everything, even their Italians. Whoa, you talking Italians? Jimmy's gonna take it from here. Refresh Italiano. See, Subway now has Italian-style Capricola, and you could try it on top of Bel Gioioso fresh mozzarella in the matzo meat, or stacked on three more Italian-style meats in the supreme meats. That's just like my Nona makes when she cooks. I don't cook. Wait, what? It's a good thing he's so handsome. It's the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway, and they're gonna keep refreshing and at Metro by T-Mobile, you can upgrade your adventure because we're giving you more choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones from brands you love, like Samsung. Switch now and save more. Only at Metro. We appreciate the business. Here at Mac and Bob's, we know the power of community support. That's why when we fly, we fly ROA. I think we should explore a few solutions. Grammarly suggestions catch when your tone might undermine your message. And it offers suggestions to make you sound more confident. Let's explore a few solutions. Try Grammarly today at Grammarly.com. All right, Greeny with you here on ESPN Radio as we roll along. So I'm told we need to hear this. So if you watched our coverage on Saturday night on ESPN of Met Celtics Game 3, you saw some celebrities, some star power sitting courtside there. I saw Trevor Noah at the game on Saturday night. I saw um, Gail King was at the game, Mary J. Blige uh, famously, and Spike Lee. And a lot of us made note of the fact, oh, there's Spike. You know, he's a Brooklyn guy. He lives in Brooklyn. But he was there cheering.